How's it going everybody? Welcome to We Do Tech. Now it's Friday which means it's almost weekend for all of you guys who had a long week so you guys can just relax but it also means that it's time for another tech news video where I go over all of the tech news that happened in the previous week. Now in these videos again I do not go over everything fully I just glance over it and let you guys know and then if you want to know more you can just follow the links in the video description where I will link everything to the main articles uh, for you to go read up a bit more. But now with all of that being said let's get into the video right after this. Do you live in South Africa and want to get yourself some awesome new gaming products? Well go check out Rebel Tech. They have extremely low prices and they stock all the major brands like Asus, MSI, Gigabyte, Corsair and many more. So go check out rebeltech.co.za to go get the products you are looking for at a low price. So first up we have some exciting rumors for the new NVIDIA GTX 2000 series graphics cards. Now they are predicted to be released on the 12th of April 2018 which is luckily just in a few months. But all of this again is just rumors so don't take it with a grain of salt, it's not fixed in stone. But now these new GPUs are not going to be Volta architecture, it's going to be the Ampere uh, micro architecture instead of Volta with Volta being more for the higher end market and the new Ampere is more for the consumer grade gaming market. Also with this Ampere architecture we're potentially just going to see GDDR6 graphics cards instead of HBM2 graphics cards. For the HBM2 we're probably still going to see those on the higher end Volta or perhaps potentially like a, a GTX 2080 Ti potentially uh, with running HBM2 memory but we're still not too sure. I predict it's mostly going to just be uh, GDDR6 because it's a lot cheaper than HBM2 and with the price spikes for memory and just uh, GPUs entirely uh, they would probably want to go for the cheapest possible for the people to be actually able to afford the cards. But with that being said some of the older high-end uh, GPUs are also reaching end of life like the GTX 1080 Ti. So the manufacturers are not going to produce those anymore and they're switching all of their manufacturing power to the newer architecture the new GTX 2000 series so this means is there's going to be a lot less stock of the 1080 Ti's uh, which means prices are probably going to spike as well and we're just not going to have stock anymore but now with these new graphics are also coming out we're potentially going to see a very low supply of those as well with probably all of the miners are going to buy all of them up so if you guys are looking to get some of for uh, first up the founders editions which are going to be released first if you want to get one of those you will have to probably pay a deposit for those graphics cards if you want to get it from some of your favorite retailers or e-tailers like for instance rebel tech uh, they'll probably also have uh, restrictions on how many you can buy just to help out the gamers a bit more but also you guys can expect me to make some videos on the GTX 2080 and also the GTX 2070 once they are released so you, can, you guys can see all of the performance and how they compare with the older generation. So those videos will come out once they are officially released. And then next up some space related news. So if you guys did watch the news you probably know that Elon Musk and SpaceX has launched their biggest uh, rocket till date the Falcon Heavy rocket. Now the Falcon Heavy rocket is three of SpaceX's Falcon 9 rockets with some modifications to it so it can handle a lot more uh, weight and then also just it doesn't f tear apart. Now how it works is it has three rockets again with the middle one having the payload at the top and then the two on the sides after uh, it's reaching orbit it'll detach and land safely back on the ground for reuse. Now unfortunately with the middle rocket it should potentially also be able to be reused but unfortunately when it was coming back to land on a barge in the middle of the sea about 500 miles away from the launch point two of the engines failed and it crashed landed into the sea at about 400 kilometers an hour destroying the entire rocket so unfortunately they'll not be able to use that one but the two other ones are fine and they'll be able to be reused. Now also the funny thing about this launch is if you guys know uh, Elon Musk and Tesla and everything they usually 
do something a bit more interesting like where they sold about 20,000 flamethrowers. So Elon Musk is always doing something interesting and with this launch you would expect them launching like a satellite or something like that. But instead of that, they launched uh, some of, one of the original Tesla Roadsters into space with a mannequin inside as well, codenamed Starman. So this was also quite interesting to see just them doing something funny like this. Now this Falcon Heavy launch is a very big deal because usually with launches like these it's extremely extremely expensive but with the Falcon rockets it's for, it's a fourth of the original price because they can still reuse the boosters which goes back to land and they'll be able to refill them up and then reuse them instead of them crashing down into the sea or wherever and destroying the entire unit. And then also in one of the interviews, Elon Musk said that he wants another space race. So he's kind of encouraging his competitors to step up their game so they can produce better rockets and then just be able to increase the amount of space exploration possible and potentially still see a colony on Mars if and even further than that perhaps because there's still a lot of things about space we don't know. Uh, but so yeah, it's quite interesting to see and potentially we'll still be able to see uh, so a colony on Mars which Elon Musk said he wants to see still in his lifetime. And then next up, if you guys have been watching some of these tech news videos, you know we have covered a lot of the Ryzen APU that are going to be released. But now there are already some reviewer kits being sent to some of the reviewers like Bitwit, where he did un unbox the Ryzen 2400G and also the Ryzen 2200G. Now there's still not any reviews out for them, but we are predicting to see that the GPU side is anywhere between a G GTX 1030 and then also an RX 550. Now this is a big deal for a lot of budget gamers because you're getting the CPU and the GPU on the single chip and the chip on its own is not really that expensive. If we just look at some of the prices for the GPUs and an RX 550 which shouldn't really have been hit by the crypto mining did see a quite an increase in prices and we're potentially seeing an RX 550 now at $180. So with the new APUs being released we're seeing that the 2200G is going to go for around $99 and the 2400G is going to go around $170. So that's already a lot cheaper than an RX 550. So if you are looking for a nice budget build, then these CPUs are definitely going to be worth it. And we still have to see if they are going to release a Ryzen 7 APU because these two are only Ryzen 3 and Ryzen 5. So with the Ryzen 7, we could potentially see even stronger per GPU performance close to an RX 560 which would really be awesome. Okay, and then next up, Google is now officially labeling all non-HTTPS websites as not secure. So if you do go onto one of these websites, it's going to give you that red screen and it says that you are potentially going to be harmed if you go into this website. Now you can still go onto these websites, but you are going to potentially be at risk of crypto jacking and then just other malicious content uh, where you can be hacked or or you can get adware, malware, and just other um, viruses like that. Now also, if you do have a website which is a not HTTPS certified, then you will potentially see a drop in traffic because it is going to scare up out a lot of potential viewers. And then also Google won't really promote that website. So if you do have a website like that, then just go, go uh, upgrade to the security to an HTTPS site. And then next up, WhatsApp is potentially bringing out a peer-to-peer -peer payment method where you can send money to one of your WhatsApp contacts. Now, this is not officially out yet, but we do have some screenshots showing some Indian banks accepting uh, WhatsApp payments. Now, this payment method is going to use a unified payment interface or a UPI, which is going to be handled by the Reserve Bank of India. So they're going to make sure everything is secure. 
Now, as of yet, we have no word on when it's going to come out for India or if it's going to come out for any other countries. We still have to wait and see for that. But potentially later in the year, we should hear a lot more news about this and see for which other countries will be supported. And then next up, YouTube is now putting on disclaimers on some YouTube news channels, which is funded by the government. This is just one of their steps to help reduce propaganda. So you don't believe a single source of news outlet. This could be BBC, Fox News or any other cha channel where the government does fund them and potentially has a say on what they have to bring out or just add some filtering to some of the news. So this is also a very big thing that we see these days where a lot of the government is actually involved in the, the news reporting where they can say, no, you can't show that, uh, to show that uh, they're not doing anything wrong, which is also a thing here in South Africa where the, where the government doesn't really want you to bring out bad news about them. So this is going to be a good thing to see that YouTube is doing this where we don't believe just a single news site and we go do our research a bit more on some of the other sites as well. Now, this is also bad for some uh, smaller news outlets where we have seen that some channels are complaining about this, where they do receive some funding from the government, but not really uh, that much. So they're kind of complaining about that, that uh, they're going to lose viewership because people are going to see this disclaimer and they're not going to trust the channel. But they have to realize that they are getting funding from the government and potentially they could say that again they shouldn't promote this they would rather say this and just filter the news which isn't right and then lastly fortnite has just reached 3.4 a million concurrent players which at the moment is the highest number yet previously it was held by pubg which had 3.2 million but also this fortnite one is potentially spread over a pc xbox and playstation Whereas the PUBG record is more to do with only PC, where they're not pre uh, predicting in the, the console statistics as well. But this is cool to see that a free game like this is uh, this massive. And it just goes to show you that the Battle Royale held mode is so highly popular at the moment. And we should just potentially also see a lot more games bringing out this mode with potentially even the new Battlefield coming out, uh, perhaps a new Call of Duty coming out and just other games in general. So I'm just excited to see what games there are going to come out with this Battle Royale mode because it is extremely fun fun but now that's pretty much it for this tech news video i do hope you guys enjoyed it if you did please like share subscribe and comment like always and then if you guys do have any uh, news topics you want me to cover throughout the week please let me know in the comments down below or on facebook twitter or wherever and i will add it in the next tech news video but with all of that being said again thanks for watching and i will check all of you next time cheers guys